Good morning, gardeners. You're watching Gardening on Taylor Mountain, and I'm Bobby. Can you believe it's almost the end of July? How are your gardens doing? What are you growing? Are you growing veggies? Are you growing cut flowers? Are you growing things in containers? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you're growing. I thought you might like to just see an end of July update on my cut flower garden. This is the enclosed cut flower garden. I have some other areas that I um, have cut flowers in, but for now we'll just look at the enclosed cut flower garden. And there is my welcome sound, the gate <laughs> creaking. All right, let's go on in. As we come in, you can see the succession of Pro Cut Sunflowers. This one here I think is a Sunflower Steve. It's like taking a long time to bloom out. Some of his take 50 days, 60 days, 70 days. Really we don't know for sure how long they take to bloom out, but anyway I'm sure it's going to be very lovely like all of his sunflowers. And these sunflowers I have chosen to leave just for the bees. I decided I decided to leave these. This one I think is a Pro Cut Lemon, but you can see the bees have been really going to town on that. And the two in the back are uh, Sunflower Steve sunflowers. His are usually the double, like the one in the back. And he's calling his mix Van Gogh Fantasy. So I have more of those coming on. And then some more sunflowers that we planted out in a video, the succession. I don't think I've ever shown this. This is St. John's wort. And there's a little bit of a debate. Is it a shrub? Is it a perennial? Is it a shrub? Is it a perennial? But it does grow up from the ground. So that makes me think it's a perennial. But it has the, after it gets the blooms, it has the, uh, the berries on it. And I do use that in arrangements. I love using the St. John's wort. And this is my little faux porch here that my husband and son-in-law built for me. And I'm not sure if I, if I linked the video that my friend North Lawn Flower Farm, Danielle, uh, hosted me on and I gave a tour of my cut flower garden here. I'll link that down below. She was so kind to host me on her channel. This is a volunteer pro cut. I'm pretty sure it's a pro cut. Just a volunteer that came up in the spring and I decided to leave it. Look at it. The birds have been going just wild over it. So I'm pretty glad I left it. I've used a few, actually the blooms in some bouquets, but anyway, uh, this I don't usually show. This is just for fun. It's an old wash tub here. We've been having so much rain. I just cut back the osteospermum there and it's looking a little yellow just from the rain. And then there's some angelonia. This is Gara here that Eh, I don't think I'm going to put Gara in, in an arrangement, in a combo anymore, but that's just for fun. And then some Celosia and some Vinca just for fun. This is Little Ladybird Cosmos here. They're yellow. So I kind of wanted those toward the end of the season. And I planted those, direct planted those from seed. There's some more Cosmo. Not doing too great back there. But here is some little short pro cuts. That I've just left. And then this is blue wheat. I'm kind of excited to see what that will do. Some more Pro Cut Succession that we planted out here. And I do Succession sow my, uh, or Succession start my Pro Cut Sunflowers. I start them inside just because of the slug pressure and things like that. And then when they get a little bit bigger, you know, of course I transplant them out into the garden. And that way the slugs are less likely to eat them. These are Benary's Giants Xenias. Benary's Giants, or you might say Benary's Giants, are my favorite uh, for cut flower arrangements. They're just nice big flower heads and strong stems. Love them so much. Of course, I've been doing my Japanese beetle hunt, <laughs> you know, several times a day. Here's some dill that I do not use for cut flower arrangements. It would be so nice to use it, but then your cut flower arrangements smell like a dill pickle. Perhaps maybe I will get some swallowtail caterpillars 
on this dill. And this is Cosmo here. I fertilized my Cosmo accidentally, and I know that Cosmo does not like fertilizing. And when you, if you fertilize your Cosmos, you won't get flowers. You'll get the foliage. You won't get as many flowers. So you can see I have a lot of foliage, but there are some buds. Oh, hi, pretty girl. I don't know if we caught her. It was a hummingbird. Then this is status behind here. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit underwhelmed by the status. I, it's the first time I've grown it. I grew QIS apricot and seeker blue. And I've been using it for drying. It's okay, you know. Anyway, here's some more Cosmo that has sort of flopped over. That's the Xanthos there. And I go in and stake up what I can. And this is, uh, I think that's the, the Rose Bonbon there, maybe. I need to um, study up on my names before I do a tour and I forget. Or that might be, yeah, I think it's the double rose bonbon or something. Behind there, of course, is my prize, which is the one and only Bells of Ireland that I was able to have germinate this year. And I have been drying them and sticking them in arrangements. Ah, love it. Getting ready to harvest all of this Dara here for a project. I sowed the seed last fall for this Dara and uh, Dara flops, it kind of needs support. And I like Dara, it does shed just a little bit in arrangements, but I like it. Um, it's, it's very, you know, very pretty. It makes a very pretty element to your arrangement. And I also had Bupleurum in this bed that I sowed last fall and it wintered over here, but it's all done now. And Nigella was in this bed. Behind there in a wash tub is some more Cosmo. I don't think I fertilized those, so they are going to bloom for me. And moving right along here in this first uh, Vigo garden bed, I have Colorado yarrow. Definitely, it can be a perennial. Of course, I could leave it, but I think I'm going to treat it as an annual, but it's on the list. I'm going to grow it again. I'm planning on that. This is Thai basil that I was going to use in arrangements, but I probably because I have it in a clay pot. It's not getting real tall, but it's really pretty. I love it. So I haven't used any of that in arrangements. Behind that is straw flowers, behind the yarrow, and then a random tomato plant left over from last year. So I just left it. I saw a few little tomatoes. I need to check, check it out again, but anyway, the straw flowers are doing great. I, uh, don't you just love them? Gosh, I love them so, so much. Straw flowers really do need to be supported. You can see my supports hidden in there because they are heavy. Look at this yellow one. So pretty. Over here I have a, just a little tub that I had some extra gumfrina that I planted in there. I started all those from seed. All the things here you're seeing I started from seed except for these uh, straggly looking, scraggly looking petunias. Now they've really, they need to be cut back. So they're just hanging on the fence in a little container. This clay pot, I just jammed full. This tall thing here has already bloomed out near this one bloom, but it's basket flower. I'll show you a picture when it was like really pretty. I grew that from seed. First time I've ever grown that from seed. These white Cosmo are so pretty. Looks like I didn't fertilize those. <laughs> Yay! Score one at least. This is tall ageratum that I grew from seed. I've been using a lot of that in my arrangements as well as starting to dry some. This container back here, a little bit worse for the wear. It's got some Cosmos in there. I think that's the Rubenza. And then I had some bachelor button in there that I need to, um, that I need to take out. They're done. And this next Vigo garden bed and right uh, in front of it is some cinnamon basil that I use in cut flower arrangements. Of course, my chives, I love them so much. They are throwing out a few little blooms after I had cut them back. But earlier this uh, in the spring, they were so pretty. And then the pincushion flowers have really flopped. 
I heard Danielle on North Lawn Flower Farm say recently, or I looked back in one of her older videos, she said, do support it. So next year I will put the uh, support netting and let it grow up through that. But I have really been enjoying the pincushion flower and I have been using the spent flower heads uh, in arrangements. I think they make such a pretty element. And of course, then we come to the uh, star flower, the Scabiosa star flower. I have been cutting and cutting and cutting on this like crazy. I'm not sure what's going on with that plant right there. I'd love to stick the star flower in somebody's arrangement and say, look, you can get seeds off of this and you can dry these pods, you can do whatever you want. So it's like the gift that keeps on giving. And recently uh, I partnered with a lady or I came across a lady or she came across me that has a ministry that she gives um, fresh flowers. Let me see if, wait a minute, nope. She flew away, it was a hummingbird. She gives fresh flowers to cancer patients and cancer survivors. So uh, I was able to take some cut flowers to her for her to make arrangements. So I'm sort of gonna partner with her as much as I can. And then uh, next week, my granddaughters and I are doing our senior center project. And another flower farm has partnered with me. So together we will take flowers for the senior center and they will put together their arrangements. But Anyway, just been having fun, and then I've been leaving as many bouquets as I can on people's doorsteps. So this is Feverfew. I grew Tetra White and uh, Snowball. I believe that's the name of it, Snowball, Feverfew. And also I've been drying a lot of the Snowball, and it dries brown, but that's fine with me because it's a dried flower after all. I'm, I'm so loving the Feverfew. I'm going to treat this as an annual as well because I think I might grow just the snowball next year. And underneath here I have a sea holly, which hmm, that's not looking too good, is it? Never had had any blooms on it, and I think probably I don't know the what's going on with it. We've had so much rain. And in this trellis is more Cosmo. Some of it has bloomed. Some of it's blooming. Some of it is not. I've used a lot of it as foliage for cut flowers. And if you hydrate it really well, cut it late in the evening, let it hydrate overnight, the foliage is perfect for a cut flower arrangement. And then Lysianthus, my favorite, just really on its way to being done, but Oh gosh, I love Lysianthus so, so much. And I must have put a couple of leftover uh, status plants that I had in there, but look at the colors on that Lysianthus. Let me get over here so we can see the color on this one. Oh, it's white with pink tips and it's really not showing up in the camera that well. Gosh, it's so pretty. I love, love, love Lysianthus. I forgot to show you the pesto basil over here in this pot, really good for uh, foliage in a cut flower arrangement, really good. And this little container here, this galvanized tub is Bee's Friend, and I see some blooms coming on the Bee's Friend, so I'm pretty excited to see what they look like. Oh, I hear her again. She's right behind me. Oh. I'm trying to catch a glimpse of the hummingbird for you guys. I might throw an insert here a little video of when I was in here and I turned around, there she was. I happened to have my camera and I got some good footage. So I think it was a female at that, that particular time. This is Celosia, or you might say Celosia. I grew several different types this year and uh, been harvesting them for both fresh flower arrangements and drying a bunch. And I do need to do a video of my uh, garden shed so that you can see all my dried flowers, but that's one of my favorite. Celosia, one of my favorite flowers. Love it so much. 
very versatile. This is a succession of zinnia that I um, that I grew under grow lights and then transplanted out. This is the dahlia mix. It's called dahlia mix. So we'll see what those look like. I'm hoping for fall colors on those. And I have a couple other successions of zinnia that I that are about that size. This is gumfrina here. Again, gumfrina, one of my favorites. I love drying it. I love putting it in people's bouquets and and you know when you're able to tell them look you can after the bouquet is done take that gumfrina out take that celestia out strip the leaves and turn it upside down hang it upside down with the rubber band and dry it i just love telling people that these next four beds were the original four beds in my cut flower garden because it was much smaller than it is now but this one has a mix of queenie uh, zinnia and um, Zinderella series zinnia. I like the Queenie series. I will not do the Zinderella's and please don't fuss at me. If you love the Zinderella's, I'm sorry, but there's a Zinderella right there. But I will not grow those again. And of course you have to have your buckets of soapy water everywhere for your bad bugs, the beetles and whatever else bad bugs you come across. Just take them off, plunk them Pluck them off and plunk them in. Uh, as per Lisa Mason Ziegler, I do not fertilize any of my zinnias. Actually, I do not fertilize any of my cut flowers except for the dahlias, which we will talk about what I use in a minute. But the reason why you don't want to fertilize your zinnias, for, one, for example, is because it helps uh, spread the fungal and it just increases the fungal diseases that zinnias get. So anything you can do to keep down those fungal diseases is good. I really don't think fertilizing your cut flowers that you use in your cut flower production need to be fertilized. I don't think it's necessary, especially if you amend your, um, your soil with a good compost. I just don't think it's necessary. Except, of course, uh, you know, I did the little Cosmo debacle. <laughs> fertilizing. I don't even know what I was doing out here with fertilizer and why I hit them with some fertilizer, but uh, don't do that. <laughs> you don't need to fertilize those. Another thing that may be helpful to you when harvesting zinnias, I add a little bit of Milton sterilizing fluid in the water, just a couple drops in the water, and that helps uh, keep down the bacteria that zinnias like to produce in the water. And I always harvest them separately. I put them in a separate bucket. So that's just a little a little thing I do. It might be helpful to you. I wanted to show you these cute little buckets. Actually, they're trash cans that I found in uh, in the dollar store for, well, now they're $1.25. <laughs> Even the dollar store got hit by the inflation in the U.S. But they're just the right height and um, perfect size for harvesting for harvest buckets. So I wanted to just show you that. You know, you can't go wrong with $1.25 for a little harvest bucket. This is a bed of snapdragons that we've planted out earlier. I grow pretty much all of the rocket series, rocket bronze, rocket yellow, rocket pink, um, rocket mix, and they are pretty much on their way to just being done. They may put up a few more um, a few more blooms for me, but I will fall sow uh, my next ones for next spring. I'm going to fall sow them. And so these will be coming out at, when I do that. And that's like, you know, the second week of some September, something like that. Here's some more zinnias. This is called Granny's Bouquet. And I grew Granny's Bouquet because my daughter always called my mom Granny. So they're... I haven't, I don't know what they're going to look like yet, but they're, they're cute. This is a bed of dahlias and I stuck a couple sunflowers in there. One of those is probably going to have to come out. I think that's probably a branching sunflower, a shorter branching sunflower that I just direct sowed some seeds of there. But my dahlias are doing really good. I just fertilized them and I use the fish and seaweed liquid fertilizer that concentrate because it is lower in nitrogen and your dahlias don't like a lot of nitrogen. This one in the center here is breakout. So I'm excited to see the dahlias this year. 
Then here's a container of some salvia and some portulaca just kind of for fun. And you know, the bees, the hummingbirds love it. More dahlias, uh, more zinnias. I, I did direct sow these zinnias, these Fenaris giants here, and they're doing just fine. I didn't have any slug damage <laughs> eating my seedlings. So this tower of, uh, what are we gonna call it? Tower something. <laughs> Anyway, it has my cup and saucer vine, and then I had this not so brilliant idea to add some hyacinth bean. The hyacinth bean is blooming out, but I am having to go in and just cut it back because it's trying to take over the cup and saucer vine. And I do cut the cup and saucer vine back as well to just keep it under control. So I will be having blooms on the cup and saucer vine probably in another maybe couple weeks. But the hyacinth bean <laughs> has been blooming and I've just been cutting it back, cutting it back. So probably not the greatest idea to put those two things together. Here's some more celosia here. And I lost one of my dahlias. It was right there and it rotted. So sad, it must be like a little, everything must drain down to that corner. And then some more um, Benary's Giant zinnias that I planted there. And I'll show you real quickly the little pumpkin patch. My grandson, I, my granddaughter and I were in the garden here doing other things and I said to my grandson, would you plant my uh, mini pumpkin seeds for me? And he said, sure. <laughs> and he knows, he knew how to do that. I didn't even have to tell him. So these are all mini pumpkins and I just used the greenhouse fabric. I weeded it, uh, the area down really closely. Then I used the greenhouse fabric to keep the weeds and the other grass out. I didn't want to use, of course, any chemical to kill the grass. I don't do that. And those two things in the middle are trellises so they can climb up those trellises. And then I just made this really fancy looking uh, little fence just to keep the bunnies from going in there and eating the plants. And that's just like a little, um, uh, whatever they call that. I don't even know what they call that little fence, but that's the height of it. It's just short like that. And then I had some stakes that we've had on the farm here forever and just pounded them down in the ground. I used my auger, my power planter auger to drive them down. And then I did, um, just make holes in the greenhouse fabric and I tried to dig around and rough up the soil as much as I could and then I added some just some soil and compost in there some garden soil and compost in there and they are doing great and I've been inspecting them every day for any kind of a squash bug or anything so so far so good yes. Well, that kind of brings us to the end of this cut flower, enclosed cut flower garden. Like I said, I do have some cut flowers in other areas, but it would just take too long for this video. I hope you're doing well, and please leave me a comment, like I said at the beginning, of what you're doing in your gardens, how they're looking, what's working for you, so that we can all learn and grow uh, from each other. And I hope you stay safe and well and happy and are able to enjoy your gardens. Until next time, friends, happy gardening. Bye-bye.